But very, very rarely are you going to buy a machine, uh, use it and make money with it for two years, and then sell that machine for more than what you actually paid for it. Okay, so the other day I told you guys when I was, when I was at the store, at the at my uh, at the new tool store I like so much. I told you guys that I was gonna be uh, that I was gonna buy another battery, an aftermarket battery, and we're gonna compare them. And this and it'd be interesting to me to know if there's a difference in. So the battery that I bought is an eight, a nine. It's a it's a it's a nine amp hour. So. Uh, the, the one that I ordered now This one is hundred and fifteen dollars, and that's a good deal. That's a great price for the eight That's a great price for the uh, high output Eight, okay, but this right here is a nine uh, amp hour uh, Aftermarket and it was 50 bucks, so Nobody gave it to me Nobody gives me nothing. If, 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 if companies give me stuff, I will tell you they gave it to me, you know. But I spend money on stuff, so, you know, I, I, I don't live in a world of where uh, I'm waiting on, on somebody to give me something. I ain't never lived in that world, so, because that world is uh, not a true world. <laughs> uh, so, let's see what they got here. And then I ordered this yesterday morning, and it came today, y'all. I mean, that, that, there's something to be said about that in itself, you know. So, y'all see it. It's big. That's a pretty big battery. Uh, I mean, it's... A little bit bigger than the eight. So let's see, let's see if it's uh, all the way charged up. <clears throat> it's not charged all the way yet. So let's let that charge. Okay y'all, so this is the one we're gonna start with. This is the one ones I bought the other day. Uh, it's the XC80 uh, and it's fully charged and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the grinder, because we know the grinder sucks a lot of power up, right? We know that. So let's put it in the grinder. Uh, right, y'all see the, can y'all see my phone there? I'm gonna look at this stuff, so. And, Okay, so I'm gonna get it going for, I'm gonna get the grinder going first, make sure it's situated, and then I'll hit the clock. So we'll, we'll, we'll be off a few seconds, but it shouldn't be by much. y'all y'all see that man look y'all that is the craziest thing i have ever seen one hour five minutes 41 seconds on a xc80 battery amazing man a freaking amazing bow down to the freaking milwaukee man un freaking believable man okay so we're gonna reset it, and this next one we're gonna put in here 
is a 9.0. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down to the house for a minute, man, while this one's running. I ain't, well, I'm not going. Now, this is not, at least it doesn't say it, this is not the high output, but it's a 9. So, all right, y'all. So, the aftermarket lasted 43 minutes. So, uh, not bad for an aftermarket. So today, by now, well, by now you guys have seen the uh, the Ferris selling the Ferris video, uh, and you know, and all that. Uh, I had mixed feelings about selling the Ferris for sure, but uh, like I said in the video. Uh, it just didn't make sense to keep it, y'all. It just didn't, you know. Uh, and I know a lot of guys are going to say, man, I'd have never sold that mower, dude, never. Well, that, that's because you're not thinking like I'm thinking because you haven't been on the mower, the Ferris, and you haven't seen how heavy it is. And, you know, uh, and you haven't seen the way the business has uh, evolved a little bit since I bought the Ferris just in two seasons. So, play the scenario on out, okay? Say I kept the Ferris, right, for another season or two or three or five. And the yards I'm doing <clears throat> don't require a mower like the Ferris. See, the thing about the Ferris is it's not as fast as the X Marks and Skaggs. It's not as nimble, and uh, it's very hard to keep grass off of everything because it's, well, there's a lot of crevices on it too. It's hard to clean. Parts are hard to get, harder to get than the X Martin Skag. Uh, for me, you know, I don't have a local dealer that's, uh, that's any good. Uh, if I was still doing, you know, the 10 acre cut and the, uh, the 15 acre cut that I was doing and then you know the a couple of 20 acre cuts that I you know doing from time to time uh, I might have kept it but I just can't see me going through another season uh, with that mower uh, sitting for the most part right that's what a backup mower is yeah I mean and you got a valid point if, you, if you're thinking that you, I mean you're thinking you're thinking like like you should right but at the end of the day the the Ferris uh, was just too heavy and too big uh, for the properties that I'm doing and it wasn't going to gain any more value uh, sometimes you gotta when well, you gotta know when to move on from a piece of equipment, especially when you've got a piece of equipment that you've used for two years and you see that you can make a two thousand dollar profit on the sale of the machine. You know, very rarely, I don't want to say always, but very, very rarely are you gonna buy a machine, uh, use it and make money with it for two years, and then sell that machine for more than what you actually paid for it for $2,000 more. Uh, that's, that, that, that just doesn't happen uh, in, you know, day-to-day -day running of a business like mine. So, uh, so say I hold on to it for another year or two years. It's never gonna be more valuable than it is right now. I might make more money with it, and but I know me, I know I'm not gonna wanna use it on uh, every single day or anything not with the cuts that I have now if I had cuts to justify that then I would but it being a 2005 model lawnmowers have come a long way since 2005 so uh, maintenance wise uh, efficiency wise and uh, all that there uh, with the diesel mower there's a lot that can go wrong with one uh, just like with a bobcat or anything, but see with the bobcat, I'm making, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. With the with the uh, the Ferris mower, I'm making hundreds of dollars. Not even, you know. I mean, I had it two years, and I might have made ten grand with it. But 
that's what you got to be thinking about when you know you are in business for yourself uh, like I said in the video what I'm gonna do with the money is we're gonna pay we're gonna pay you know the man lift and the and the skag on off that'll be done that'll be saving me uh, over five hundred dollars a month that I got coming out uh, automatic every month not only will it do that but it'll also uh, free up money to where I can just go buy another lawnmower, another Exmar, you know, top of the top, their top mower. And the $2,000 profit that I made on the mower that you're not supposed to make, <laughs> I will be looking at that as, okay, the mowers have gone up in price, the new mowers have gone up in price, but I made enough profit on the Ferris, the 2K, over what I paid for it to cover any additional charges that I'm going to incur buying a new mower, you know, as far as the inflated price that they are, you know, they've gone up the last couple of years. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just, and that's, the, and that's the way it is. My thinking is, you know, get those two things paid off, satisfy those loans. And uh, then if something happens this summer, if something breaks down or if I feel the urge or if I feel like it's not going well, then I can just go down to my Exmark dealer and I can just sign up for a brand new lawnmower with, you know, 48 months, no interest. So take them, you know, a couple thousand, three thousand, four thousand, whatever, because by then, hopefully I've been made, uh, you know, some some of my money that I'm going to be making this summer. So, uh, I know a lot of guys are gonna, well, man, you didn't have to sell that mower, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, uh, it didn't make good sense to keep it. And at the end of the day, I ain't trying to hold on to equipment that I don't use. And I'm not trying to dip into money um, for new equipment without go ahead and depleting the uh, excess that I got first. If it was the only mower I had, that's different. If it, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell, you know, uh, my Bobcat. Because it's only, if I had three of them, I'd probably sell one just because I, I can't run three of them. And uh, with the lawns being what they are now, as opposed to two years ago, and not to mention, it was just a good deal. Sometimes, you know, I will spend money if it's just a good deal. Especially if it's something I know a lot about and I know it's a good deal. You got to know it's a good deal and you got to have the cash on hand. You got to make it easy for the buyer, you know, or the seller. Uh, it's really not about what you sell things. I mean, you have to evolve a little bit and you have to, and only you can make those decisions because only you know where you're at, you know. Uh, you have to kind of take some, some calculated gamble based on your experience or what's the experience for, right? There's no point in having all that experience if you ain't taking, if you're not using it to your advantage in business.